not as old as some other cabins, but the main reason for that is this is a form largely to have an underground river. Right? The process is pictured here. You're more than welcome to look at that as we come back out. But I'm going to summarize the, the main point there is uh, over time, when it rains, and we've had lots of rain in Texas recently, but that rain will pick up a little bit of carbon out of the atmosphere and uh, also in the soil crevices. Uh, it's, it's a mild uh, carbonic acid. Nothing that's going to hurt you, but it's enough to uh, etch and wear away and erode the limestone. Okay? Over time, those voids get a little bit bigger. They get infiltrated with more and more water. And at some point, the boulders will fall from the ceiling. They'll, they'll actually collapse in on the cell. And that's what happens. The main structure called Backbone Ridge. Uh, part of the larger land above the rest of your human geology. Okay? This, it was full of uh, debris at one point in time, too. Once the water receded, it was not material. Right? Now, of course, yeah, there are things that you can do. calcium carbonate. All right, see these little soda straws? All right, little water droplets at the end. When, it, when that water drops or evaporates, it leaves a little, little tiny bit of calcium carbonate behind it, okay? One of the lessons learned in this part of the cavern, before we go any deeper, is that these structures form very, very slowly, okay? Uh, generally speaking, it takes about 100 years for every inch of growth on these cave formations. Right, so these little guys here could be uh, anywhere from 200 to 300 years old. They were here when I was six years old, the first time I came through the cavern. Okay, so behind us here, calcium carbonate is used in very common products like uh, tongues and acid tablets, things like that, and household cleaning products uh, that your moms probably use, and dads, and dads. See, that's also a dad joke. But, uh, it's also used in uh, toothpaste, and hopefully we all used a little calcium carbonate either last night or this morning, right? So if you look around us, you'll see various uh, K formations. So one of the warnings that we start out with here, and I'm going to show you if it's glowing. See the little sun straws? I'll slowly go around. It's hard to see with this flashlight, but using the black light. But if it's glowing, it's growing. Okay, so the warning we give here is just be careful and don't touch any of the cave formations because, yeah, yeah, it, it's kind of behind the light, it's hard to see. You can see them over here. So it's a little, the, the warning is don't touch the formations because when you do, you leave a little bit of your, the oil behind your hands. It doesn't matter that your hands are clean, you leave a little bit of oil from your skin. And uh, what that does is it causes the water just to run off. It doesn't allow it time to deposit that calcium carbonate and create the formation, okay? Of a visit to Longhorn Cavern. But it wasn't called Longhorn Cavern back then, all right? Uh, in 1879, there were four couples uh, on Valentine's Day actually had a picnic lunch near our historic entrance. And they brought their dates after they had their picnic lunch. It was probably very romantic, and I don't know what it is with romance and caves. <laughs> but they brought their dates here via candlelight. They used just a candle, all right? In 1879, these were the largest uh, deposits of something called a calcite crystal uh, known in the world and it looks kind of like quartz it's not particularly very valuable or anything but it makes some nice crystals uh, the calcite crystals on the mineral hardness scale are about a three uh, your fingernails are about a 2.2 and to compare that with diamonds diamonds are a 10 okay they're the hardest so i'm going to turn on the lights and give you guys an opportunity the rule is you go up the stairs, 
okay? Go up these stairs on either side and then go down the ramps and you do a figure eight and you can see both sides, okay? So I'm gonna turn on the lights and then just meet me back over here, okay? So you go up the stairs and then down the ramps, up the stairs and down the ramps. We also use this as a conservation uh, example because people over the years that visited the cabin, even before the, uh, the earliest visits, they started to uh, set their dates up on, on top of here, or people used to pose for pictures and things like that. We can even find uh, pretty old uh, graffiti in there, dated 1919. People always, human beings tend to want to leave their mark, okay? So yeah, don't, don't touch it. But what, what happened was, when they touched it, unfortunately, they damaged the formation and it quit growing, okay? So it's no longer necessarily a, uh, a growing formation. So we use this as a warning as to why you don't want to touch the formations. But uh, we do, we have a date in there, 1919, it looks like it was done last week. But it's been there since 1919, okay? So the Queen's Throne, and then, if you look over here, we all pass this structure over here, which is quite unusual. Uh, can anybody tell me if that's natural or man-made? We, we usually get about a 50-50 split. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll cut to the chase and tell you that it's a natural formation. Okay, but it did not naturally occur there, all right? Now this is a different type of rock. You'll notice it's a little smoother. It's a harder rock, it's called dolomite, okay? The CCC found this structure in a much deeper part of the cavern, all right? They brought it out here to display and they set it up right because it looked like a dog and they thought the queen's throne needed a watchdog, okay? So this is called the queen's watchdog. All right. about a little over a hundred of them in this entire cavern system, all right? And we will see them like that. They're loners. They don't congregate in large, and they call them the top of that just because of the coloration on the, on the floor. Now, we're going to have an opportunity to see one much, much closer that you need a, a, a good uh, photograph. Okay. Okay. See this area here? This is the historic uh, opening, natural opening to uh, Longhorn Cavern. This used to be the historic entrance to Longhorn Cavern, and it is roughly, see where it's staying there? That is roughly the entrance into Longhorn Cavern. Now the CCC built a ramp system coming down, 
they were almost more ADA compliant than we are today, right? <laughs> but uh, unfortunately, because of the rain, the rains we have, and sometimes the not necessarily flash floods, but uh, the extensive rains we have sometimes in Central Texas and thunderstorms, it would start washing debris down in and onto the ramp system, and they abandoned it after time. Uh, also, because little little critters used to get through that gate, like uh, like skunks and things like that. A skunk would ruin this uh, tour, wouldn't you agree? <laughs> All right. So uh, they used concrete and blended it into the sides. They did a, a pretty pretty good job. We if we didn't talk about it, you may not know that it was there. Right. 1840s, uh, this area had, uh, uh, there was a banner convention local to the area. They kidnapped a little girl from San Antonio. Uh, they held her captive to her for a while. Uh, they wanted to ransom from her family. Uh, don't go into details on that, but here, here's what I do know. In the 1840s, people didn't call 911, right? Uh, here in Texas, at least, they notified the Texas Rangers, which is a historic law enforcement. so popular, all right, a two, they had a 2,000 square foot wooden dance floor where we're standing. They had tables lining the, the walls in that. Uh, these were, were very, very popular events, very fancy. You can imagine uh, like candlelit dinners down here and drinking and dancing going on. Uh, the men dressed in full suits, the, the ladies were in full dresses, okay? It's nine minutes long, but I'm not leaving until somebody at least dances or at least pretends like they're dancing. You ready? The gut bucket shuffle. Okay. Uh, uh, music videos and different things like that. But uh, yeah, it's fun to kind of think about, and there are pictures up there. Yeah, those are rocks. See those little structures? You see little uh, soda straws up there too, right? So it's worth it. Uh, but once, before we go, the young lady here had a good question. You guys saw a little bit of the, the red light. Uh, stained areas up here, all right? 
This was left behind by a different kind of bat. Remember, we talked briefly about the Mexican tree-tail bat, okay? So there used to be massive quantities of Mexican tree-tail bats in the cavern, and they used to go out and feed. They're very voracious feeders, all right? They left little, little dirty paw, uh, claw prints, if you will. Remember, they hang upside down. So after a night of feeding, they'd come back into areas like this, and then they'd uh, have to relieve themselves. And unfortunately, what happens is, uh, the area where we're all standing would have been uh, piles and piles of bat guano, okay? So bat guano would have been as tall as we're all standing, probably, all right? In the 1860s, uh, bat guano was uh, used during the Civil War because it had a potassium nitrate in it. And they, they leached the potassium nitrate out of the bat guano to make a simple gunpowder. So it was used during the Civil War uh, in the South, and caves like this became very popular uh, in 1861 during the Union blockade because they mined it and actually produced gunpowder out of caves like this. So that's why it's called the powder ring, all right? So believe it or not, okay? So it's still available today for gardening and for fertilizer for plants, okay? Now, fast types of barrels in this, in this cavern, and it was certified for up to 2,000 people, okay? Now the government printed nice instructions on there, so after we ate all the crackers and the, the, the uh, survival food uh, and the rations out of these barrels, we could use them to uh, collect uh, water and then also to use for uh, field restrooms, okay? But for you kids, you never want to get those, those two um, mixed up, right? <laughs> Okay, can you imagine 2,000 people being down here? We would definitely have to crack into a few of those barrels pretty quick, right? So, in 1989, they removed the barrels after the fall of the uh, Berlin Wall, effectively ending the Cold War, so to speak. Uh, they removed 100 barrels, they cracked into at least a couple of them, and tried the food and the crackers that were in there. They say it tasted like cardboard, but it was still edible. This is 22 years later after they've been placed in here. Somebody had a question, so do you have a question? Um, yeah, there's some writing up there. Writing, you're, you're gonna see some of that because uh, again, you have to think of this uh, uh, from a full time perspective, right? Uh, even some of the CCC workers, shame on them, they would carve their initials in certain areas of the cavern. So yeah, you're, you're gonna see that occasionally, but uh, good eye. Hey, you guys, your group, you guys are definitely going to get a sticker. Okay, you're going to get a sticker. Now look at this. Uh, this is what that shirt looks like when it's not harvested essentially, right? See that layer? Almost looks like peanut butter sticking out between some crackers. <laughs> yeah. Or a loaf of bread or something like that. I'm, I'm getting hungry. So. Yeah. It's microcrystalline quartz. If anybody's curious. So this, this part of the cavern was not known uh, until the CCC got here and started doing their work, okay? So there's a good picture of, of this room. This was actually taken in this room. This is a historic photo. But uh, this is a CCC worker here sitting. And he is, he is approximately sitting over here. like a full moon on the back wall. And one of the reasons uh, folks that work in caves do that is the same thing. It's like what we do up, up top, right? Uh, they have to come up with some type of a landmark. And if they needed more water in here, or more, uh, you know, picks and shovels, or more guys to help uh, carry stuff out, they would say, hey, we're in the moon room. It's in the message back up top, and they'd get more, more help or whatever they needed. But uh, if you didn't know what the moon room was, people say, what? What are you talking about? So they, they name things. Uh, just like the, uh, I'm going to tell you how we got here. So good job, Ben. Everybody give Ben a round of applause. Hey, good Thanks job. For coming into Dolomite, so that they called this the cave of disappointment. It didn't go very far. But if I say cave of disappointment, people, like if you were working with the CCC, you go, oh yeah. You know, we spent a week doing that and it didn't go anywhere. But it has a nice 
an uh, example of what a drapery formation would look like. Now that's an older one, that's not an active one. It's been dry and it hasn't been active for some time. But that's a drapery formation there. And so lactites grow together, uh, you know, side to side, okay? Now, if you've read about the cave tour, this is one of the areas up ahead. You kids can laugh at your parents at your own discretion, okay, if you want to. But this is an area that, that averages about four foot eight, okay? So most of us are going to have to be hunched over a little bit, all right? We're going down a ramp. My, uh, formations we have that's still actively growing is, is right here and it's actually flowing down onto this layer of church. This structure here is called the giant icicle. It's still growing, yes. Do you see the little sub straws? Yeah, they're still dripping. They're dripping down here. So these are still Yeah, that's between 14 and 15 feet uh, long. So it's, it's roughly 17 to 20,000 years old. Well, okay. Yeah, it hasn't changed much since I was six. <laughs> if you come back then, and you're my age, it's not going to grow that much. So I hate this picture. So the angel's wings are dripping down onto this structure, which is uh, referred to as the devil's footstool. <laughs> okay? And if you look on the back, when they grow up from the bottom, they grow up a little bit different. Uh, the, the water actually cups, forms little tiny little cups on the back, and the water will spark or sparkle when there are water drops in those little cups, depositing the calcium carbonate. Kind of neat. But look, it's, it's actively dripping right now, so it's growing, basically. Kind of a combination between flowstone and uh, stalagmites, but eventually they may meet together, right? So we're going to continue to go deeper, but as we make our, our way around this corner, I'm going to point a couple things out because they're perspective based. If you look down here on the right hand side, that looks look like a So that's neat to look at or take a photo of or a selfie when you get down there to the 130. Like if you take as many pictures on the way back. Struck it rich. They thought they had gems and diamonds on the walls. <laughs> but if you look at our little sample of the uh, Topo Chico bottle, that actually explains what happened in this area, okay? So at one point in time during the history of the cavern, there was a fissure somewhere up top, and it allowed uh, very highly mineralized water to come down in here, okay? It stayed in here a long, 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 I'm trying to remember how many, long, 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 long time. How long? A long time, that's right. So uh, as the carbon dioxide left, it acted very similar to a uh, bottle of Topo Chico. The carbon dioxide leaves, the water became flat, 
and all of the mineral dissolved in that water started attaching itself to the sides. These are large uh, calcite crystal deposits, okay? So I'll point out a couple things. Uh, it looks very neat in colored light, and also if you use a laser, you'll see it kind of lights up when you put a laser in it, right? Kind of interesting. So while we have the lights off, uh, again, the water was in here for a long, long time, all right? You can see the water level, okay? At some point in time, it was above this, right? This layer of crystal. It receded down to here. You can see the water line here, okay? These crystals above it stopped growing. They're much smaller than the ones down below it. Now, as the water receded down here, this is another water line, so it stayed here for quite some time. These crystals quit growing, the ones above, but the ones down here at the bottom are massive. They were in solution for a lot, lot longer. All right, so, kind of interesting, right? Again, uh, not worth a whole lot of money, but they're, they're neat. You can, you can find them. Uh, uh, we, we even sell them in the gift shop. I'm not trying to sell them, by the way. But, uh, it's good to